If you are a lifelong toy collector, or even just a uh, guess Johnny Come Lately toy collector, you may be familiar with one of the most infamous toys to collect of all time, and that would be the original Boba Fett from the Kenner Collection from the 1980s. Now, while a lot of us own this figure because it was mass released on multiple card backs for multiple movies, it has a very interesting history and has become one of the most notorious production prototypes of all time. Well, and that's because of a very interesting set of legal circumstances. So, top line, you're probably familiar with this figure from pop culture, the missile-firing Boba Fett that was offered as a free mail-in promotion. Now, this figure has been popularized in pop culture, appearing on Pawn Stars and on Toy Hunters, it's become the subject of documentaries, countless YouTube videos, and a lot of time spent at conventions staring at these beautiful prototypes in glass cases. In fact, this toy has become such an icon of pop culture that it's actually been remade. Not just the figure, I mean, Boba Fett can obviously be bought in many different form factors, but an actual reproduction of the original toy, but now with the missile firing mechanism included that was removed from the toy. Not just once or twice, I mean, Hasbro has done this figure, but he's actually come out multiple times from multiple companies with this long-lost mysterious feature now replaced, or rather put back into the figure. From both Hasbro, from Gentle Giant, companies have made prototype versions, non-painted versions, versions that actually have a missile that fires, version where it just has a missile that's removable, some recreate the actual mechanism, some have a different, more modernized mechanism. But the point is, missile-firing Boba Fett has become bigger than the sum of his parts. It's become a feature of both childhood and adult toy collecting. So, with so much hubbub around this figure, and, well, the figure basically becoming one of the most notorious bounty hunts in toydom, no pun intended, why is it that this figure actually changed? We all know about the removal of the missile firing mechanism, but the other half of the story is rarely told. We're pretty much just told it was removed for safety reasons, and that's completely true. In fact, that's what Hasbro, excuse me, Hasbro Kenner, gotta remember who was making Star Wars toys in what decade, when Kenner mailed out this figure and had to tell customers that it didn't have the missile feature, it included a note letting customers know if they're disappointed in any way, they could get any other Star Wars figure they wanted. What kind of deal is that? Can you imagine that today? Being able to exchange a figure and say, I want the Wilro Hood figure from, you know, 2009 or something like that. I mean, that's a crazy offer, but hey, that's what Kenner did, because when they removed the major feature of the figure that was shown in all of the prototypes and in all of the prelim publicity and, well, all of the advertising clearly showed the feature. And the main driving feature of the toy is now gone. So, yes, of course, they had to find some way to make this up. And all of the different versions, the J-slot, the T-slot, that refers to the shape of the slot on the back of the backpack, whether it looks like a J or a T. And there were multiple different versions created looking at different ways of having the mechanism work while still ensuring that the toy functioned and, well, was safe. And that's actually exactly what the issue is. You see, when you have a small projectile on anything, whether it's an action figure or a Nerf gun or, well, pretty much anything where something comes out through a spring-loaded trigger mechanism known as a projectile launcher, well, like I said, the myth of this figure has become bigger than the figure itself, and the prototypes have sold for thousands, tens of thousands of dollars with different versions, depending on, you know, if it's painted or it's actually sculpted, going for higher and higher money, and continuing to see reproductions offered by multiple companies. All right, so, understanding the pop culture value of the figure... And noting that the, uh, the the missile never, ever shipped, even though there are people who claim to have gotten one, sort of like people who thought Biggs was in the uh, original cut of Star Wars. All right, so what's the deal? And what does Boba Fett have to do with this spaceship and this little red projectile piece of plastic? Well, everything. So, the other side of this notorious story 
is with this, the Viper from Battlestar Galactica. Not a Kenner toy, Kenner making Star Wars, but rather a Mattel toy. And a line Mattel picked up directly to compete with Star Wars once it took the world by storm. I mean, heck, Mattel passed on the line in the first place. So when they were able to land the Battlestar Galactica license, heck, this looked like the perfect counter to passing on the license for a galaxy far, far away. They were able to make ships, and figures, and figures that went in ships, and ships that went in figures. Okay, just kidding about that last one. But Mattel went all out, even doing multiple giveaways and promotional offers similar to Boba Fett to get fans and kids really into the line and feel that strong emotional connection to these figures. By the way, anyone ever know that the Cylon's eye is the same exact thing as Kit from Knight Rider? It's because the same guy designed the helmet and the car and loved that symbol, that little light. All right, that was a random piece of trivia. So, kids in the 80s, growing up with Star Wars or Battlestar Galactica, the toy companies were ready to basically make sure you were fully ready to enjoy yourself, and that meant being able to blast away at the enemies with missiles, because spaceships have missiles. And back then, the missiles were small. Look at the size of those things. They're pretty much the size of like a quarter, or you know maybe two quarters lined up with each other. Something like this would never pass today. That's because today we have all sorts of choking hazards, small part warnings, Mr. Yuck logos, all sorts of legal requirements that the Toy Association of America and Europe, different areas of the world territories, have different legal lines and requirements. But essentially, the choking hazard small parts, which requires a very bold logo, or rather warning, on the front and back of toys that contain small parts for children under three. A lot of this came out of the book Toys That Kill, which was published in the mid-80s. It's an Edward Schwartz book. I've done videos on this book before because it's very important to the history of toys, and it's why so many safety regulations exist now. Previous to this book pointing out so much of this, there were very few regulations in the toy industry, and, well, the Colonial Viper ship that Mattel made had a missile firing mechanism feature, projectile launcher. It was the selling point for the vehicle. It was basically the only action feature for the vehicle outside of the landing gear and the canopy. And unfortunately, this led to the accidental death of a small child who, unfortunately... Robert Warren fired the missile directly into his mouth. And unfortunately, because it was such a small part and there were no warnings back then, the missile horribly, horribly led to his passing. Now, of course, the parents took legal action against Mattel, and it's pretty much a clear-cut case that Mattel needed to do something. But this brought attention to the toy industry in general and a much, much larger issue. Now, of course, Mattel took action by first informing parents about the issue and reminding them that they need to monitor their children and their children shouldn't take spaceships that shoot projectile missiles and shoot them into their mouth because there's a danger there. And yes, you should wait to give these kind of toys to a child until they're old enough to actually be able to play with it in a safe way. A lot of the accidents that happen with toys in the 60s, 70s, early 80s were basically toys with very young children playing with them where the toys were not appropriate. But this is before there were age grades. You'll notice there's no age grade on this toy. It doesn't say for children four and up or three and up or toy contains small parts. This existed previously to all of that legislation. Mattel's instinct and their actual action was first to put a big burst on the package reminding parents that there was a small projectile and telling them that they should not fire it into their mouth or towards one's face. So this took the place of a small parts warning. It was Mattel's own sort of self-governance and self-regulation that they created before the U.S. government stepped in and, with the Toy Association of America, created standards. But that really wasn't enough, and the note telling parents to essentially make sure kids didn't fire the missile anywhere that could lead to injury... Well, they actually then redesigned the toy, putting an even bigger burst on the package, letting parents know that this toy, as well as all Battlestar Galactica toys, were now redesigned and no longer had a projectile-launching missile. So, hey, remove the feature, 
make clear that this toy is not one of those early versions that did have it and problem solved. Well, it wasn't exactly as simple as that, especially because fans figured out pretty quickly how to fix the ship and actually make it so it would fire the missile again, which kind of uh, takes away from the entire point of trying to fix things. But this case went around in the courts for years, and it was pretty clear that toy companies were going to have to start regulating themselves. Unfortunately, Robert Warren had to be the terrible, terrible victim of this tragedy, which directly led other toy companies to start pulling any missile firing mechanism from toys. And that's exactly why Boba Fett lost his missile. The missile from this Battlestar Galactica ship, which was very tiny and was definitely much smaller than the current regulation that the Toy Association creates. So, without regulation, yeah, no choking hazard, no small parts warning, and no age grade. You were basically opening yourself up not only for lawsuits, but for, well, a lot of danger. And you were putting children in danger. What the toy industry did to counter this is they created the small parts tube container. So this is a device, a tool, that's provided to toy companies by the Toy Association of America. It's an official, actual, designed, clear tube with a slanted cover inside. And anything that pokes out of it is considered safe. If it can fully be immersed inside of the tube, then it has to get a small parts warning. It's as simple as that. That's how toy companies decide what is a small part and what's safe. And believe me, the missile from Boba Fett and the missile from that Battlestar Galactica Colonial Viper would have absolutely sunk all the way into this tube, requiring a small parts warning and an age grade that was appropriate to that type of mechanism. But again, this was decades ago before this device existed, and the small missiles that were in the Colonial Viper unfortunately became deadly. And if you'll notice on all of even the Boba Fetts in the modern line that have a missile-firing backpack, well, the missile's huge. In fact, it's almost as big as Boba Fett. And that is pretty much the exact visual proof of the, well, I guess, of, of using these safety warnings, that now a missile that comes with a figure has to be big enough that it's not a small part. Unfortunately, we had to go through some danger there, but that's the story of why Boba Fett lost his missile. Go uh, non-regulated safety toys from the early 80s. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was at least informative. Please do share it with others. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video.